Hey guys, I'm uh, super excited to be here. I think this is my fifth slush. I am still uh, in disbelief how big this venue and uh, the event has gotten. To get all these people uh, here uh, in the middle of winter in November is uh, no small feat. So uh, give your uh, hands up to uh, the slush team. This is an amazing organization. So I wanted to tell you guys uh, a little bit about this dream of a billion dollar companies. I was the first product manager at Google and I firsthand saw uh, what it took to build an amazing company and uh, scale it uh, for the first six years I've been there from 30 people to 3,000 people. Now it's almost 60,000 people. And I can tell you a lot of stories about what was really interesting and special, but the one thing that really stood with me uh, was literally uh, thinking very big. Uh, and when I was working for Larry himself and um, trying to launch the first international size of Google or other products, the one thing that really surprised me about how we did things differently was actually thinking big. Which actually also brings me to uh, why I met Slush every year. Uh, that was one of the ways that uh, we met Rovio uh, at the time, in, back in 2009, 2008. We were looking for a formative uh, mobile gaming company uh, because of one of our other investments where we basically already knew that one of the most important areas in mobile was going to be gaming. And when we met Rovio, they weren't just like any other gaming company. They had a crazy ambition to be one of the first billion daily active user companies. And even today, when you hear Peter Westerbacca speak or anybody else from the Rovio team, they're very inspiring. So um, they definitely thought about gaming and mobile differently than anybody else. Um, we were very lucky to get involved in some other companies. Uh, we had uh, multiple uh, billion or close to billion dollar outcomes, and most of these were actually crazy ideas. Um, so just to give you kind of uh, a feel for some of these, uh, one of the most recent one was Twitch, which was acquired by Amazon, which is the leading community of online gamers. Um, and another one was called Climate Corp, which was acquired by Monsanto, and they basically had the idea of using uh, their own satellite data to predict weather events and then turn it into an insurance product for farmers. It sounds extremely crazy, but it's a pretty big market. Uh, and then another one was uh, Climate Corp, uh, which was basically, uh, and another one was Meraki, which was cloud controlled Wi Fi, then again at the time was again revolutionary because Wi Fi itself uh, was basically almost like going to the dentist and it wasn't really optimized for people that are setting it up themselves. Um, so, there is kind of a theme uh, behind uh, these big bets, and hopefully it can resonate with some of you that are uh, in the audience as founders as well as investors. Um, and the, the, the theme that uh, we use to basically identify the next billion dollar ideas is basically twofold. Uh, we believe that there are two big areas where we can find these kind of companies and we hope to, uh, that, that some of these will be, uh, will be created. One of them is what we call reinvention. So there are a lot of really important software areas, a lot of uh, big businesses created, a lot of market cap, uh, where the products were not really built for the mobile age, nor was it built for cloud. Um, and we think some very valuable companies are going to cre get created in this area. Uh, and interesting examples are like things like Microsoft Office uh, and many other uh, software products we use were really invented for packaged software and not really for mobile devices as being the principal gateways for people to access the internet or to carry on their daily lives. Um, the other area that I think is equally interesting is what we call frontier. We also think that today where we are is one of the most exciting times in the history of human life because we think a lot of interesting things are coming to fruition and are gonna reach market maturity. Things like robotics, artificial intelligence, um, software is going to touch different areas like bioinformatics. The way that we predict our health, uh, the way we're going to cure people, uh, it's going to get more and more closer to software. Um, drones, uh, 3D uh, technologies that leverage 3D to make an impact in our lives. These are really big areas that even today might sound like science fiction, but we think they're going to really break into uh, big markets. And we have actually made some bets uh, to be within these areas, and we certainly think that we're going to see some of these technologies actually become mainstream 
as the lead catalyst to create some of these billion dollar companies. And when it comes to reinvention, uh, we're going to expect a similar trend. And what we're looking for is basically products that we use every day that are critical to us, but reinvented in a way that we actually would love to use them even more on mobile devices. Um, and that is one of, one of the key, key aspects, I think, that makes for an incredible company uh, that might lead them to a billion dollar in valuation, maybe even 10, maybe even 100 billion dollars. Basically and essentially creating a product that the moment we use it, we're like, wow, this is an amazing, awesome experience. And then if that product or service were to go away, we can't even imagine our life without it. And so that's one of the critical aspects that we're trying to combine with these two themes. And behind me, you can see some of the companies uh, we've been in, able to get involved uh, that are basically creating products or services that really resonate with you in this sense. Um, and in the same way, um, the critical use, I think, is also really important. For instance, when we're thinking about companies that serve the enterprise, there are so many different areas that a product can get created, but what we found is the more critical the product to the essential conducting of a business, the more value there is to be created. So as a result, we have done some investments in an area like payments uh, or commerce, Shopify being the leading commerce platform, Adyen being the leading payment infrastructure company. Um, even today, it powers four of the top five internet companies. And so that's kind of one of the ways that we've been able to identify um, some of these companies that we think are going to have a big impact. But we certainly think this idea of really creating an awesome product is a critical aspect. In fact, the way we try to uh, find the companies ourselves that we're going to get involved is basically we're looking for this awesome product insight, that exceptional product visionary uh, that is uh, part of the founding team um, and this kind of thinking about a product in a way that has not been done before that makes it really excellent and special. And we're basically looking for that in the two verticals that I mentioned. So people that either take an existing uh, use case and then completely reinvent it for mobile and cloud or in one of these new technology areas where also at Slash you can see some really, really stunning things like companies that are basically making programmable materials to even some others that are really mind-blowing stuff that we really want to get, uh, we really want to see get to mainstream and change our lives. And so that's where we are as well. Um, and some of them are here and some of them are not, but we strongly believe this area like robotics, artificial intelligence, even health, how we diagnose ourselves and what we do with our data, things that can be completely customized to us, medicine and nutrition is a big, uh, big thing. And then in addition to that, I think another uh, one of these kind of areas that I think are going to get to this billion dollar valuation or be really hot is this area of Internet of Things and kind of quantify itself. And there obviously you have seen the success of Nest, but we think that given how much time we spend at home and at work, there has to be many more billion dollar companies created there. Um, the way that uh, we, we have physical activity and we track our nutrition is another one. So we, for instance, are in Fitbit, and it's been amazing to see that company grow in just a few years, go from uh, basically mere hundreds or thousands of users to now basically dominating um, the wearables market with roughly about, I think, three out of every four wearable device sold is a Fitbit, uh, which is an amazing stat given that you know, big companies like Apple are making a big inroads in that space. Um, and that is, again, because they've been able to come up with a product uh, where the experience is really, really amazing. So we think the same thing is going to happen in how people consume food and how people track food. Uh, we're very excited about some bets over there as well. And then even some other basic stuff like even photos. I mean, things uh, that we do today and use uh, our avid fans like Instagram, there is still a part of, uh, of our experience that is not completely re uh, replicated in the mobile and cloud age, there is still no perfect uh, concept of a photo album, something private that can be uh, shared on multiple devices with family members. I still don't think there is a perfect solution for that. And many other areas like that that touches our lives and kind of is kind of an anal digital equivalent of an analog important aspect of our lives that has not been perfectly reinvented yet. And we're very excited about this concept of reinvention. And we're very excited about this concept of frontier markets that 
today still looks like science fiction or about to like break into the mainstream. And we do think it's going to be um, a really, really cool experience to see them uh, coming into our lives and making a big difference. So with that thought, I really appreciate uh, your time. And hopefully that uh, inspires you to set up some amazing companies and, um, and also among the investors to think about the companies that you're looking at. But uh, events like this at Slash, seeing how far this event became, it's kind of a great equivalent of uh, thinking big and an awesome experience. Now that I've been at Slash, I can't even think of uh, a conference that is not or as well organized as this one, where even the Wi-Fi is functioning so well. So I have to give these guys huge credit and uh, thank them again for having me uh, have a chance to talk with you. Thank you.